Hi, hi, good morning and welcome to today's products in focus. You can see the US 30 there managed to almost etch up, well, it actually did get another all-time high there yesterday in a relatively volatile session, finishing with another doji formation, just bang on that as potential resistance level at 17,895. Market's probably gonna be relatively flat this morning as we are awaiting non-farm payrolls, which is due later on today, and uh, unemployment and average earnings. So they're expecting a number of about 230,000 new jobs. Um, and if that's the case, that'll be the 10th consecutive month that there's been over 200,000 jobs created, um, showing, giving you a bit of an indication as to the strength of the US economy. And we've seen some very interesting moves in the uh, USD overnight, especially in the likes of dollar yen, which is again trading above 120, which is very, very interesting. Euro dollar would be more interesting uh, if it wasn't for the fact that Mario Draghi did not do the widely expected uh, laying of the foundations for uh, more and uh, more stimulus, which caused a big rebound. Uh, but the reality is it's going to come sooner rather than later. Um, but anyway, US 30, springboard potentially 17.895 is a broken resistance now potentially acting as support. So looking at the UK 100, I had a pretty bad day yesterday, uh, finishing off the lows, potential support 66.86. We're moving in the right direction at the moment. A little bit of a spike first thing this morning, but only by about 20 points, nothing to write home about. Uh, potential resistance, 67.71. To be honest, the UK 100 doesn't look that good. And this formation right here almost looks like a kind of a double top. Uh, so we've got a break above 67.71 to be able to have a proper chance of continuing on this rally, because right now it does look a little bit top heavy for the UK market. Looking at Japan 225, it continues to go from strength to strength. Obviously in the back of that dollar yen move, uh, 18,306 is the next potential resistance. We're in the middle of two ranges right now. Um, candle formations here, the last three sessions, are indicative of buying interest on in any dips. So Japan 225 looks good going forward. So looking at dollar yen, uh, again, we are um, moving in the right direction above 120. Uh, so we're at 120 spot 20 right now. Uh, as ever, uh, if you've been watching these videos, you know we like 124 as the next potential resistance. We are worried that if things accelerate too quickly, that there could be the very slight chance of uh, intervention by the Bank of Japan. Probably unlikely, but you just never know, so just be careful. Uh, you could be looking at a 100 pip move in the back of that if it does happen. Uh, if it goes slowly to 124, then it's not a problem. It goes there too quickly, and that is a bit more of a problem for, uh, for, for Japan. It's probably unlikely, but it's just something to be aware of if you are uh, currently looking at long dollar yen. So moving on to crude oil West Texas, um, looks like this is uh, pressured back on as ever. Saudis cut oil prices again to Asia and the US overnight. I think they're pretty committed to trying to get extra market share. Uh, and that's going to add depression to pricing uh, to, to prices. Talking about sixty dollars for Brent, which would bring West Texas down uh, a little bit below fifty nine fifty. If that if that is the uh, kind of market floor for these products, um, sixty four dollars is the next potential support level. And obviously, we had that decent bounce there Monday, and just had that slow uh, drift the last couple of sessions. Uh, it's a very uh, interesting product to trade. Obviously, a lot of volatility there. Uh, but West Texas crude is, is probably the one that uh, many traders out there are looking at because you do have these significant support levels there at 64 and 59.50. Once we get down to there, um, the next potential support is all, you know, a, a lot, lot lower. Uh, so that's probably going to be the uh, the level that many traders are going to be looking at. So looking at gold kind of going forward, um, it's not done that much the last couple of sessions in the middle of two ranges. 12.18 is next potential resistance, 11.86 next potential support. Bobbing around that 55 period SMA uh, with the, the slow stochastic there still massively overbought, the RSI relatively neutral. The truth is, in the backdrop of a stronger USD and uh, again, more interest rate talk from the US, you know, in 2015, when's it going to happen? Uh, and non farm payrolls today, if that figure comes out particularly strong, gold's probably not that well positioned. So, um, has a little bit of an opportunity there for drift back down to 11.86. Obviously, should non farm payrolls uh, massively disappoint? gold could we challenge that 12.18 level. So finishing up with uh, Euro dollar and cable. So Euro dollar, incredibly volatile session yesterday in the back of uh, Draghi not laying out any of those um, stimulus measures. Then the news kind of, did, not the news, but I guess the analysts started coming in saying, well, look, they're probably going to have to do something early next year. So they started to go back down again. This presents itself a very interesting opportunity today for traders as we are pretty much bang on that, that uh, highly uh, visible support level there at one spot 2367 we're on the right side of it right now acting as support um, 
non-farm pools comes out today particularly good and uh, you could feel uh, another technical breakout um, beginning to materialize around about that level. Obviously, if it comes in really badly, this is a great springboard for a move back up to 125.79. So finishing up there with GBP USD, uh, it's on the back foot again, rapidly approaching potential support, one spot 55.99. Technicals are neutral. Uh, again, this looks quite vulnerable to strong non-farm perils figure uh, as kind of traders kind of digest um, Osborne's autumn statement there. I think there's probably to be able to do all these uh, cuts. Uh, there's going to have to. Uh, it's going to have to come somewhere, uh, and the poor people are going to get hit that little bit harder. So that's maybe not so good from commentators are ripping apart the the chancellor's plans for um, his autumn statement, and that's adding pressure onto GBP USD. Uh, if we break 155.95, we are looking at one spot 54.24 as a next potential support. So I come at data wise, obviously you know non-farm payrolls, uh, you've got the trade back. 130 is going to be a very interesting time, that's UK time. Nothing else, much else to talk about. Fast forward onto Monday and we've got Chinese trade data, trade balance data uh, and we've got some industrial production from the US. So it's all about uh, non-farms today. We do have a webinar that you can go ahead and join if you go to support and then live trader events. Uh, our uh, live webinars attract a, a decent number of clients there uh, for the analysts to talk about the potential fallout of that figure. It comes out live and then they discuss uh, uh, the kind of the impact of that on those markets uh, following into the rest of the week. So as ever, keep your eye on the chart forum, make insights a part of your layout going forward and join me again on Monday to find out what happened next.